I will give the positive feedback to the teachers who have planned everything. It makes a lot of difference when it comes from a parent's mouth. This is the feedback I receive. It's amazing to say that this is probably the best performance I ever watched. How did you do it? And I don't want to make it in a way that is very superficial. Actually, it's not. I will say that during the drumming performance, there's this particular part that is so cute. How do you all do it? So the teacher was like, oh, you realized it. Yeah, this is the part where I'm suggested. And we think that it's appropriate to add it into the routine. I was like, yeah, that is very good. It was very authentic. And people think that you really watch the whole performance and give a very meaningful feedback. Welcome to Agile Leaders Conversations where executives, business leaders and experts from all sectors come together and share leadership insights around leading in today's workplaces. They will be sharing some tips on how they use the Agile mindset to make sense of the complexities and lead with authenticity and ease. My name is Chen Chue and I'm an author, executive coach for the Fortune 500, a speaker and a facilitator. I specialize in agile leadership, helping organizations and their leaders be relevant and effective in the workplace of today. I'm so happy to have you listening in to this episode of Agile Leaders Conversations. My guest today is Hui Peng Tan, chairperson of a school board which was named Primary School of the Year in the year 2021 in Western Australia. I'll hand over the time to Hui Peng to share a little more about herself. Thank you, Chen Chen. I'm originally from Singapore and previously worked in a corporate for 10 years. I have then relocated to Perth to start a family with my Australian husband. I had a career break and then I took up full-time parenting when my son is born. Ever since my son started primary school, I was very active in the school activities. I realized that this is something I really enjoy doing because of the nurturing environment and the passionate staff in the school. So it's an absolute joy to able to work with them and participate in the curriculum. So in 2021, I was approached to join the school board. And fortunately in 2022, there's an opportunity for me to be the chairperson. So I'm very happy to be able to contribute meaningfully to my son's school where he spent his time most in his life. So wonderful to hear this is the mother's love to contribute and to be actively involved in your son's education and experience in the school. And what better role than to partner the mm. school, the community, to bring about a better learning environment. And we know that in education is the experience that counts for the children. So Hui Peng, I'm wondering what are your general thoughts of the book after reading it? So firstly, I was very amazed by the illustration. It's very well written. All the eight paradoxes, actually, I can see a human face. So when I read it, I was like, yes, this person really fits into the description. So for myself, ever since I become a mother and I was actively participating in school activities, I realized mental health is something I'm also very passionate about. When I was reading the book, I dive deeper to every paradox. What is their mental state when they were doing all this leadership style? What is their thoughts and thinking process? Even though the book is talking about leadership agility, I took a little step and dive deeper into their mental thoughts as well. So it's very intrigued. I feel very intrigued by the book. Was there a particular mental model that you picked up or that you could correlate in your corporate experience, in your experience as a mom or experience as a chairperson of the board? Yes. When I read all the eight paradox, Pradesh is the one that relates me the most. So in my scope as a chairperson, the difference between a board member and a chairperson is the chairperson has to work very closely with the principal. It makes a lot of a difference for the school board to be effective. The principal and the chairperson must be in good relationship. The reason we were always in discussion the principal and I, we always met the same challenge. We have the best interest of the school. We know what works and what will benefit the school. But again, what Pradesh in the book says, we try to inspire the staff, the parents, and the community to participate. But it's very hard for us to embed the ideas into that. Firstly, we don't want to add additional workload to the staff. 
everyone is busy, especially parents, they have multiple kids and they have different priorities. So that is the part where Yes, it strongly resonates to what we are doing. Actually, what there's a very strong parallel with the companies that I work with. Majority of the companies are trying to transform. And they are also very mindful about, I don't want to add work on people because they are already trying to work as hard and as fast as they can. We don't want them to burn out, but yet we need to inspire them to come on board with us, cooperate so that we can create something better, something more sustainable. Many years ago, when I started my leadership development journey, I read Peter Senge's book, The Fifth Discipline. And in there, I could understand why there was such a strong parallel for listeners who are not where I used to be a school teacher. I learned a lot of these life lessons, leadership lessons back in the days when I was teaching. And so according to Peter Senge, there is a strong parallel between parents and child, teacher and student, boss and employee. So you will see the same leadership mindset and the dynamics in these three parallels, which many of us, we have experienced at least two, if not all three. So you are saying then in this school board, the cooperation at the top is very important. And how do we inspire people to come on board instead of telling them what they have to do and help ingrain some of these things into mm -hmm. them. From your experience, we can share with us, how do you inspire them to do something differently? I have two experiences to share. First, when my son started the primary school, my method is always show up. Showing up is so important, especially early childhood, like primary school, show up and be consistent. And if there's a school assembly, children are having a performance or something, and the performance is well received, even though the parents sitting beside me, they were saying, oh, I'm amazed how the teacher can make my sons do the drumming. We were so amazed. So for me, I will give the positive feedback to the teachers who have planned everything. It makes a lot of difference when it comes out from a parent's mouth. This is the feedback I received. It's amazing to say that this is probably the best performance I ever watched. How did you do it? And I don't want to make it in a way that is very superficial. Actually, it's not. I will say that during the drumming performance, there's this particular part that is so cute. How do you do it? So the teacher was like, oh, you realized it. Yeah, this is the part where I'm suggested and we think that it's appropriate to add it into the routine. I was like, yeah, that is very good. That's very authentic. And people think that you really watch the whole performance and give a very meaningful feedback. So this is the thing I have been always doing. The other method that I want to share is, I want to sleep by example. So in 2021, Western Australia opened up the education award for the primary school of the year. So for me and the principal, we think we can win because of the effort of our school are doing. But again, who is going to write the nomination letter? So again, it's very difficult. And first of all, nobody has the capacity to write. And secondly, nobody think we will win because we are just a neighborhood primary school and the previous winner gifted school. Wow, so intimidated. I decided to step up and write the nomination letter. I wrote it and I submitted it. We become the top four finalists and then we win the award. I was there in the award ceremony and I witnessed the excitement and the recognition that the teachers received. The award ceremony was from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. At 9 a.m., the school has live streaming of all the students watching for the results. And then some of the teachers are able to capture the moments where we win. So when we look at the photos, the students were so emotional and then they were cheering for themselves. It's like yesterday we are just a normal primary school, but today we are an award-winning primary school. We are so happy and so emotional to see that. And that is priceless. And I feel whatever thing that I do, it's absolutely worth it. Two very beautiful stories and you touch on two vital leadership behaviors, you know, that everyone listening can gain something. When we say praise, encourage people so that they can be inspired, it is something that we want to do authentically. And you use a very strong word, we give meaningful feedback. We look out for signs of effort going 
above and beyond. We describe it to them as a teacher speaking with you. I can imagine how inspired they feel because teachers, as with many of the corporate employees, they're all working in the background. Mm. And sometimes it feels like a thankless job. And this one interaction can change how they go through the rest of the day. And if we make it part of the culture, we always notice exactly what they are doing and we are very specific. It shows that we are paying attention. That becomes meaningful feedback. And then there is oxygen to the soul. No, yeah, giving absolutely. encouragement, oxygen to the soul. The second part, which was very strong as well. I think my clients can also see that like the senior leaders will think that we are quite good. But the people below, because they are so deep in the trenches, they are a little bit lost in the weeds. They can't really see the bigger picture or see the value of their work. Then it is up to us to create success for them, to make it real. Instead of just saying empty things like, don't worry, we are doing a great job. We will reach the targets. Those are very abstract and vague. So taking the extra step on your part to write the nomination and to be interviewed by the panel, you have concretized and made the success real. And this impact is so wide. For the children, I believe, when you film their faces, how it changed, for them is, wow, I'm no longer a neighborhood primary school. I'm part of a successful organization. And that, I believe, changes their identity from inside and their whole outlook towards mm. life. That's life-changing. That's really excellent. There was also this definition of leadership agility in the book. From your role as the board chair, um, I would like to know, how, how do you see this definition of leadership agility? I just started chairing the board this year. So I'm still very young and I'm learning as well. That's why I'm taking a leadership course right now to really add value to my role. So when I'm approached by the principal to chair the board, my first question is, Oh, why me? I'm not a PhD holder. I'm, I don't have 20 years of education experience. Why me? But the principal said something very inspiring and straight away, I will take up the road. She says, you have the best interest of the school. That's why you are chosen. So I feel that, all right, I have the passion and I really want to add on to a leadership skill to make sure this board runs smoothly. And I want to make sure that my board members have a safe environment to speak up and not just go there for the sake of going there. And even worse, they don't want to attend the board meeting anymore. In my opinion, a leader should be approachable, inspiring, and long-term thinking. So that's the one that I want to really work on being approachable and then creating a safe space for the board member to run effectively. I really reflect every time the board meeting finish. So I will reflect what are the things that people find too boring and not interested. But I also don't want people to feel that they are obligated to say something. People might think I'm not contributing. So it's a very fine line on how you want to chair the board. And everybody's leadership style is different. We always have an agenda set up before the meeting. So there's this part, the last item, which is the general items. So this is the part whereby I intentionally think about it and curate how I want to present these general items. First of all, I want to make sure that 15 minutes, the board to be engaging and able to speak whatever they think will be beneficial for the school. And also make sure that everyone has a chance to speak, not as someone who is always dominating the meeting. So it's a very delicate thing that I, I have been working very hard on. So I think by reading Chen Chen's book and attending the leadership course, it's real nutritious to what I'm doing. And I really want to continue to improve and learn about my leadership skills and what I can bring on to the table to the school board. Wow, very consistent. A few themes always come up and it demonstrates your entire mindset towards leadership. It's a never-ending journey. You are always reflecting, observing, and then reflecting and improving again. You are continuously exposing yourself to new learning opportunities, reading up and widening your knowledge and repertoire. 
Okay. Your heart is always very clear. You want everyone to be able to participate, be able to speak up how you want to be seen. You want to be an inspiring, approachable leader and demonstrate long-term thinking. Actually, in my coaching engagement, I frequently do a leadership branding exercise and you have already done it because they will tell me they want to be good leaders. And I ask them, so what does a good leader mean? And that definition is so wide and diverse. It depends on what makes us tick and for you is service is giving back it is focusing on the positive focusing on the possibilities so your leadership adjectives has already come up very strongly inspiring approachable long-term thinker and that whole process of how you quickly transform in, in a way because your engagement in the school board at the beginning was more on i just want to show up Right. Mm. I just want to be supportive to my child. I want to be a good role model and being approached to be the chairperson and then getting unanimous support and approval. It was never your agenda. It mm. just happened organically. And once you get the basics, when you have your values sorted out, you know how you can contribute, then you will know how to respond. And one thing was also very strong, even though it's a general item, the last 15 minutes, you're fully aware of how people are feeling. And then you will engineer it and you choose the topics running in a very clever way so that people are engaged and everyone gets to speak. So to all listeners out there, one thing I want to tell you, boring meetings are the worst. <laughs> Fastest way to take away energy and erode motivation. Mm. So perhaps what we think is sharing today will give you some food for thought. Can you reflect? Are there different ways to run your meetings such that every minute, every second spent is well spent? Yeah. Really enjoy the conversation with you, Hui Ping, and also when we caught up for coffee. I'm wondering what leadership advice do you have for people out there? Personally, my point of view is not everybody wants to be a CEO. Everybody leadership style is so different. If you want to set an example, and this is what you want to do, I used to have the imposter syndrome as well. I'm generally a very shy person. But then I look back at all the training I've done. I want to be able to inspire and be approachable. And that is why I can be what I'm doing right now. We feel that every time we think about challenges and we have obstacles, we think that maybe I'm not that good to overcome these ob obstacles. But... That, that is definitely not true. You just need to have another method. And again, everybody's vision is different. If I have a passion on what I'm doing and I am able to influence and engage, I am the leader that I want to be. So this is what I want. So I hope the viewers or listeners were able to think about what you want as a leader and you will able to progress what you want to do if you have all the steps in front of you. So many of the people I interact with, even I myself, struggle with imposter syndrome. Like we always think that we are not good enough, especially when we are minorities. Mm. But like in my field, leadership experts. But in this field, there are very few Asian women. Mm. And that's why when we met her, I was like, wow, we think you're first a migrant, next you're a minority. How did you get that unanimous approval to be the chairperson because it's a position where you are voted in it is very precious and it goes to show you have found a way to make an impact without changing who you are even better by honoring who you are mm. internally for viewers listeners who are curious Hui Ping usually lives in Perth so she's back in Singapore to visit family and friends and you might be wondering where is she having this interview and this is also a perfect example of leading by service, leading by uh, helping others. So I am a member of the Greater Club. And when I knew that Equipping is in Singapore, but she doesn't have the equipment. So I reached out to the Greater Club and said, could you help host my guests? Could you lend her the equipment and the beautiful room for us to have this conducive interview? So businesses can do it too. By serving others, by giving first, and then you lead the way. I will leave Weeping social media links in the podcast. We continue to learn, grow, share, and develop. Thank you so much, Weeping. Thank you so much.